We are going to create a 4x4 asynchronous ROM. And we'll stuff it with the same data that we've been playing with, and we'll read it out. OK? OK, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come into Model Sim, and I already launched it, and I have a test bench ready. And I'm going to do File New Project. And I'm going to browse to my baby here. So I go to Desktop, and I go to VHDL, and I, ha I created one called ROM Async. And I'm going to do project. And let's add. Boom. And I add my test bench. Boom. Boom. And let's add, create a new file. And we'll call it ROM 4 by 4 async VHDL. OK. First thing we want to do is take a look at the test bench and see what it's actually looking for. All right. So you are going to have a system called ROM 4x4 async, fine and dandy. It's going to have an address and a port called data out. The address is going to be 2 bits wide, and the output is going to be 4 bits wide. This is exactly the example we've been doing okay, throughout the MROM all the way to EEPROM and Flash. Okay? What it's going to do is nothing much. It's just going to generate four addresses, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, and cycle through them and wait for your ROM to output information. Okay? So all we need to do is build this to have a system that looks at the address and produces the output that we want. What output do we want? We want the same output that is in our example. OK, OK. So let's do this. Let's start some copying and pasting. We know we're going to need the library. And let's get the ports correct. So I'm going to come into here, and I'm going to go ROM, boom, boom. I come into here. And I'm going to start off and say entity, boom. All I need to do is go back and put myself in is. And then I'm going to come down here and go end entity. And then I come down here and I say architecture, architecture. And then I do, let's get this puppy on the copier thing. Boom, 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 boom. I say architecture, boom, arc of boom, is, boom, boom, boom. Begin, boom, 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 and architecture, and we're good. Let's warm up the compiler. Okay, it's been a while. Oh, compile all. No errors. Yes. All right, are you ready? We have not done this before. We are going to use, we're going to create a new type. Okay, very similar to what we did with Finance Day Machines. Okay. But the type is going to be an array. Okay, So here's the way that you do this. You do keyword type, and I'm going to call it ROM type, just like we did with state type. This is a ROM type. And this little puppy right here, this type, is going to be used when we define a new signal and or constant. So I say, OK, ROM type, and it is of type array. Now we covered what an array was like for less than two seconds in 261. We've never actually used it until now. So now we finally get to the point where it is an array and all we're going to do is we're going to tell it how wide it is and how deep it is and we are going to tell it it's going to be four bits wide but we want it to also be of a certain type. So this is going to be standard logic vector but the way that arrays work is they have indexes, indices, that are given to them as integers that are unsigned. Actually, you could probably do it as, as signed, but we don't want that. We want to access these puppies with the following indices, okay? those following numbers. So we're building exactly what we had. So what you do is you say it's an array, and you go 0, 2, 3. That then gives the range that we're going to have of the addresses. So that assigns what number is associated with each one of these. And you do it since it's memory. You go from 0 up to the high number. And then you tell it what is at each location. So all we do there is we say of standard logic vector 3 down to 0. Okay. So does that make sense what we did? We said we're going to have a new type. It's going to be an array of this size. It's going to come from 0, 1, 2, 3. And it's going to be standard logic vector, 4 bits wide. Boom, we have created it. Now, 
All we did was create the type. Now let's create whatever is going to be in there. Okay? I can tell you this. You could make a signal of ROM type, but for a ROM, you do it as a constant because you, you are just going to put information into this thing. Okay? We're just going to pile in our values. So then what I do next is I say constant, and I say it's of ROM type. But then when a constant is there, I get to put what's in it. Okay? And do you remember what the values are that we want in this thing? We want 1110 to 1110. And then we want 0010, 0010. And then we want 1111. And then we want 0100. So we need to put that in there. Okay? So the way that you do it is you do an assignment to this constant. And you have to pump in every value at every location. So I use this operator okay, for constants when you set these up. And you do it like this. Parentheses, and I go z address location 0 contains. Notice that this is going the other way. And then you're going to do 1110, comma. We have now put that piece of information into location zero or in index zero. All right, so I'm going to copy this puppy. Boom. I go boom. Come all out here. And I am now going to put it at or define what's at one. What do I want to put at one? Well, the next piece of information, which is zero, zero, one, zero. And then I'll go ahead and copy this puppy. Boom, boom. And oh, boom it all twice. Boom it, boom it. Four booms there. Then you go two, and then you go three. And at location two, I'm going to put what? All ones. One, 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 one. And then at location three, I want zero, one, zero, zero. OK, to end this puppy, I do a close parentheses and that. I have now done it. I have created this thing. And all I need to do now is create some sort of logic which will produce this value when I see an input of this value. Okay? Where does this value come from right here? Where does that value come from? This is the address, okay? and this is the data out. OK, are you ready? You know what one trick is? Is the address coming in as a decimal number? Look at the ports. Everything is standard logic vector. So you know what you're going to have to do, right? There's some type conversion. OK. Here is how we're going to do this. Okay, You're going to be blown away how simple it is. <laughs> data out gets assigned. Why am I assigning to data out? Because that's my port. Okay, That's what I actually want to drive out to. The way that you access whatever's in ROM type is you do it like this. You go, oh, god dang, constant? We didn't give it a frickin' name. All we did was say constant ROM type. We forgot to put the name in there. What do you want to call this array? ROM? Oh, I like it. Matches the book exactly. So this is going to be called ROM. Okay? And it has a type of ROM type. So if I wanted to access this constant, which I've named ROM, all I do is I give it an integer. Okay? So if I did that, what would come out to data out? What would be assigned to data out? It would be, yeah, exactly. It would be 1110. If I put ROM at index 1, it would spit out this value. 2 it would spit out that, blah, blah, blah. So what we need to do here is we need to actually convert the two-bit address that's coming in as standard logic vector into what type? Actually, an integer. Okay? The way that arrays work is the locations of each of these words are actually of type integer. Okay? So how the hell are we going to do that? Well, I'll give you a hint. You can't do it directly. Okay? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take address and we need to convert it into an unsigned number. And then we'll convert the unsigned number to an integer. So I'm going to first do this. Unsigned. Now I've created 
a unsigned value of address except shoot. This function isn't defined in these two packages, is it? Crap, I got to go up here and I got to instantiate the package which has that function. Does anybody remember what it is? America? Use IEEE.numericstd.all. Boom. Now I've got that function. And then we need to convert it to an integer. So I come over to here. Does anybody remember what the function is to convert something to an integer from unsigned is? To integer. Exactly. To integer. And boom. All right. I feel pretty good about this. Let's see if this puppy compiles. And let's see if it simulates. That's all we're doing. Begin and boom. That's it. We're not even inside of a process, are we? Not even inside of a process. So I'm going to save this thing. And let's compile. Selected. It's successful. <laughs> we didn't need to be inside of a process. This is a continuous signal assignment because it's asynchronous. If you give it an address, it spits out the value. OK, OK. I feel so good that I want to simulate. So let's go into the work, and let's fire up a test bench. And I go look at my baby here. So all I want is add to, wave, signals in. Let's just look at design. Actually, you know what? Let's, yeah, I did do design. Let's go look at this. And then I look at this guy. And we need to run it for, goodness, my little number box went away. Let's dock it. Come back up here. We'll run it for 200 nano. How about that? 200 nano. Boom. All right, let's look at this. OK, so here's the incoming address, I believe. OK, so this is the incoming address right here. And it's 00011010011110. Actually, we didn't need these, did we? And look at what happens on the output. We got 1110, 0010, 010. Did the third one work? 1111, 0100. Holy crap! How cool is that? That was pretty easy, wasn't it? That was pretty easy. And it turns out, it is easy. Notice that we didn't tell it it's an MROM or a PROM or any of that crap. It's because that's a technology mapping thing. This is just a model of a ROM memory. OK, how would you envision, if I was going to change this, how would you envision changing this model if I then said it was synchronous? You would have to add a process. Okay? The process for a synchronous ROM is actually not very involved because there's no reset. There's no reset on memory arrays. Okay? They're just bits. So let me show you what you would do. Assume for a second that you now have a clock and that this assignment is only made when you get a rising edge of a clock. But there's no reset. So this is beautiful. I come up here, all I do is I come over and I go, OK, we'll call it memory process. What's in the sensitivity list? Clock. There's no reset. Then all I do is I say begin, and I say, hey, the only time I want to make that assignment is if I have rising edge clock make this assignment. Otherwise, what do you want to do? Nothing. You don't you just want to hold that value. So you just say end if boom end process. Look at how simple that was. That was what you did to make this synchronous. Okay? Pretty simple, isn't it? That's pretty nice. I like it.